Is he gone? Can we like just make sure? Triple check. Well, it seems Donald Trump has officially exited, kind of, voluntarily, I guess, the White House, and we can go back to brunch. No, of course not. If you think we can, this video is not for you. Actually, no, sorry, wait, no, it is for you. Don't move. The departure of Donald Trump from the White House doesn't end the physically exhausting, morally repugnant saga of the fascist flavor of the decade. He'll likely remain in headlines for the foreseeable future. But more importantly, there's a lot that he and his administration have done that will require someone with a vision and the will to overhaul changes that have had a drastic impact on the lives of millions. Luckily, we've got these guys. The Radical question, left. Would you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is, what were you what listening to when you was high? Uh, <laughs> what was on? Hey guys, I'm Sana. I'm an immigrant three times over, and this week we're talking about how the Biden administration and the Democrats need to undo the Trump administration's greatest success, kicking out immigrants and refugees and cultivating a very explicit and open hatred of them. And since you're already here, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, I bear and bring no delusions about the American immigration system and the violent exclusionary history of that system. The very first immigration act of the settler colony of the United States was the Naturalization Act of 1790. It allowed any free white person deemed to have, quote, good character and having lived in the United States for two or more years to apply for citizenship. In 1849, the first anti-immigrant party was founded, the Know Nothing Party. That was their name, completely serious, because you weren't supposed to know they existed. They considered themselves Native Americans and were anti-Catholic, anti-Irish, anti-German, anti-Jewish, anti-immigration, anti-Black and indigenous. But they also weirdly were anti-slavery and believed in economic liberation of men and women. The 19th century was wild. In 1882, there was the precedent-setting Chinese Exclusion Act and the Immigration Act of 1924 that limited the number of immigrants allowed into the United States based on national origin quotas and excluded any immigrants from Asia. Yeah, there was a pretty good attempt to make immigrants almost exclusively from Northern and Western Europe. And by the way, that just goes on and on and on throughout American history. In other words, in addition to being founded on stolen land, in addition to being built through one of the worst systems of enslavement, the United States has had an immigration system that hasn't always been very welcoming. In many ways, it's been designed to exclude rather than to welcome. So let's start there. Now, it's no secret that perhaps one of the biggest reasons for the dogma around Trump is rooted in the fear-mongering around Muslims and the 11 million undocumented people in this country. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States. We have to stop illegal immigration into this country. It's killing our country. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. And thus, one of the defining features of the Trump administration's four-year tenure was the overhaul of immigration. While, again, the immigration system in the United States has long been designed by bigotry, devoured by a history of criminalizing entire groups of people based on economic and foreign policy considerations, the Trump administration was still able to do something pretty remarkable. And despite long being reputed as incompetent, the dismantling of legal immigration policies in particular has been done pretty competently and with a lot of zeal. And of course, the barely human manifestation of Mistopheles, Stephen Miller, has been at its helm. That is one of the most outrageous, insulting, ignorant, and foolish things you've ever said. Legal immigration in the United States has been cut by 44% since 2016, a number estimated to rise to a 49% cut in 2021. Asylum seekers and refugees numbers have also been gutted. Check out this BBC chart that outlines exactly how much refugee admissions have decreased under the Trump administration. Immigration by family members of citizens have been almost halved, and even the diversity migration program, which gives green cards to underrepresented communities, has been completely stopped. Detainment at the Mexico border has increased and H-1B visa petitions for highly skilled foreign nationals now has a denial rate of 30% versus 6% in 2015. And the Muslim ban? Well, Muslim refugee admissions were also drastically down under the Trump administration. And of course, then there were the horrific family separations. All that I just mentioned isn't exhaustive of what's happened under this administration. 
But what's clear is that the Trump administration worked excruciatingly hard to ensure a type of immigration overhaul that resembled something out of the 19th century. So where does President Joe Biden fit into all of this? That still feels weird to say. Biden during his campaign promised to make immigration a priority, starting with the so-called Muslim ban. I will end the Muslim ban on day one. The list of campaign promises is long. Here we go. We'll just let this scroll up a little here. Screenshot it, share it. Biden even promised in September of last year that if elected, he'd build up, quote, immigration system that treats people with dignity and is true to American values. And just a couple of weeks ago, he said as soon as he takes office, he was going to introduce an immigration bill that would, in addition to ending the Muslim ban, also create a pathway for citizenship for dreamers, undocumented Americans brought here as kids. Regarding the separation of over 2,600 children from their families at the U.S.-Mexico border, Biden said that the DOJ would investigate what happened and determine not only who was responsible, but if the actions were criminal. And that's where it gets kind of interesting. See, despite all these promises of a dignified immigration system and a rebuke to Trump, Joe Biden was also the vice president for an administration which oversaw the highest number of deportations. It oversaw violent ICE raids and family detention. It oversaw kids in cages, infants and toddlers in what were then referred to as baby jails. Here are the major immigration policies undertaken by the Obama administration, some of which the Trump administration just built on and worsened. Biden did state during his campaign in an interview with Jorge Ramos that the Obama administration's policy of deporting hundreds of thousands of people without criminal records was a, quote, big mistake and that the administration only started to get it right with DACA. I think it was a big mistake. It took too long to get it right. It was painful, but it wasn't until 2012 that it took, just took too long. And I think we got it right. He began to get it right. We began to get it right in 2012 with the DACA program. But that's not enough because there's a lot at stake. In addition to the immediate danger that does exist to the lives of tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, Biden hasn't rebuked the immigration policies that he supported while vice president. Deporting hundreds of thousands of people without criminal records wasn't a mistake. It was immoral and it was a systemic practice, not an oops. It ripped families apart and it wasn't done with some nice, hello, please come with us, we're taking you home. Are we expected to believe that violent ICE raids started in 2017? That people coming across the US-Mexico border, including children, were treated with dignity and respect? Until there's a reckoning with that, how can you begin to build a system of immigration that even inches towards dignity? Now I know, Sana, that is so bleak. Have you no hope? Realistically, no. Biden may not have the courts, but he's got executive orders, the House, and the Senate to an extent. He does have the opportunity to do some meaningful immigration reform, something that doesn't just right Trump's wrongs, but improves the system itself. There are 11 million undocumented people in this country, and a path towards citizenship isn't always easy or possible. That, at minimum, needs to be fixed. And there are pragmatic reasons why the Democrats and the Biden administration would and could overhaul at least some of Trump's overhaul, the popularity of immigration, the economy, and elections. According to Gallup, the number of Americans who want more immigration in the country has increased in just a year from 27% to 34%. And the number of Americans who want to see less has decreased. There are also economic considerations, as the American economy is believed to get a lot worse before it starts getting better. And immigration is always great for the economy, right? Undocumented immigrants provide the cheap labor that this country runs on, and man, that is an awful thing to say out loud, but who do you think makes your $15 salad possible? And then there are the elections, 2022 and 2024. It took a lot of mobilization to get voters out last year. And while I don't think most people who voted for Biden voted for him as much as they voted against Trump, there is still an expectation of do something. But if they fail to rebuke through significant reform, some of Trump's most insidious policies, the Democrats and the Biden administration run two major risks. They run the risk of not only pushing already exhausted and reluctant voters towards legitimate apathy, but also failing to show themselves as, well, 
and opposition. Guys, that was great. Thanks so much, man. Woo, it's, it was good doing journalism for four years. All right. No, we don't hold, no, we don't hold Biden accountable. That's not what we do here.